Welcome to the Joy of Development. This is episode 6 of our VR snowboarding project. Now that we've got our character's code finished, it's time to start creating our levels. So we'll create a new level. And to it, we're going to add a directional light, a skylight, a sky sphere, and a light mass importance volume. Then we'll go to our modes and select the landscape mode. This green grid will give you a preview of how large your landscape's going to be. We can also grab a copy of our character and put it in the world to get a better sense of scale. For the landscape options, you can leave the location and the rotation at zero. To control the length and width of our landscape, we'll be adjusting the section size as well as the variables below it. You could set your own values or you could just copy what I've done. But if you're looking for exceptionally large levels, you'll need to look into level streaming. I also recommend changing the scale on the z-axis as this will let you make taller mountains. As you can see, I have mine set to 300. Once you're satisfied with your settings, go ahead and click the Create button. Now with our landscape generated, we can use our sculpting tools to modify it. I'm going to start with the ramp tool and set its width to an extremely high number. Now control click to set the start and the endpoints for your ramp tool. Use the location gizmo to adjust the ramp as desired and then click add ramp. I use this to generate the initial shape of the mountain. And then go over it with the smooth tool to blend everything out. It's also at this time where you could start experimenting with the other sculpting tools to get more details. I'm keeping mine pretty simple, but feel free to spend as much time as you need on this. And once you're comfortable with the general layout of your mountain, switch from the Sculpting tab to the Manage tab and select Edit Splines. The Spline tool works similar to the Ramp tool. But you can add as many control points as you need, and you can add curves to the paths between them. We'll control click to add our first point. But before adding a second point, we'll change the width of this one. I like to set mine at 3000, and now any additional points we add to the spline will inherit that width. We'll continue control clicking to add points to our trails. You can also control click from a previous point to add a fork in the trail. Continue this around the mountain setting up all the trails you want. But do be careful of uphill slopes including jumps. They may be taller than you expect and you might not be able to access them. If you end up with some slopes that are too tall, just use the location and rotation gizmos to adjust them as needed. Once you're satisfied with your trails, in your Landscape Editor, go to Deform Landscape to Splines and select All Splines. This will carve your trails into the landscape. But there may be some unexpected results. These can usually be fixed very easily by blending them out with the Smooth tool. You can also select individual spline segments and deform only to select it. This comes in handy for working on specific areas and for making jumps. To make a jump, we can make an isolated spline segment. We'll drag one end up and give it some rotation. The rotation will add curve to the spline. And when we deform the landscape under it, we end up with a nice curved ramp. As usual, you should use the Smooth tool on it a little bit to clean everything up. Then we're going to select our Light Mass Importance volume and use its brush settings to scale it up to the appropriate size. You'll want to try to optimize this more than I did. And for larger levels, you might want to use a different lighting method entirely. But once your level's set up how you want it, you can click Build Lighting. This will bake your lighting, and you'll need to redo it when you make changes to your map. It can take some time, so do it sparingly when you're sure everything you wanted to do is done. Now if we preview the game, we can see that everything's working appropriately and the mountain's rideable, but we're stuck with this grid texture. 
And while we could just easily cover it in snow, everything would look a little bit better if we add some rock faces in on cliffs. Painting in all that detail ourselves could be pretty tedious, so we'll make a material that'll do it all for us. I've made a new ground material and two new material functions, one for the snow and one for the rock. We'll jump into the functions and get those set up first. We'll start with the rock function, and the first thing we want to do here is make our output result a Make Material Attributes node, and we're going to want to have control over the size. For that, we'll need a Scalar Input node as well as a Texture Coordinate node. To create a Scalar Input node, just look up Function Input and change the input type to Scalar. Now just multiply the two of those together and you'll be able to control the size of your material. With that set up, we'll need two texture samples, one for our base color and one for our normals. I'm using the T-Rock Slate texture and normals that come with Unreal Engine. And we'll plug the result of our size coordinates into the UVs for both texture samples. Finally, we'll need a LERP and two constant scalar values. I have mine set to 0.5 and 0.2. Now take the alpha from your texture sample and plug that into the alpha pin on the LERP. All of our attributes are all set, so let's plug things in. Take the RGB value from your base color texture and plug that into the base color on your material attributes node. The results of our LERP will go into our roughness and the RGB from our normals will plug into the normals. Now that that's all done, we can move on to our snow. The snow is going to be done in mostly the same way. So you can just copy and paste all of this into your snow function. The only thing we have to change is the texture samples to something that looks more like snow. For my snow, I use the poured concrete material textures. Now we can combine these two material functions into a single material that will automatically paint the landscape for us. So let's open up our ground material and start assembling our result node. We're going to blend our two material functions together based on their alignment in the world. Anywhere flat enough will have snow, but anywhere steep enough will have a rock face. And we'll be doing this using a world align blend node. To set up our rock and snow, we'll need a break material attribute node, the material function, and a scalar parameter. We'll name our scalar parameters snow size and rock size plugging the size into the material function and the material function into the break attributes. We'll also need two additional parameters for our blend settings. One is for the blend sharpness, and the other is for the blend bias, which controls how steep something has to be before the material starts to show. I have mine set to 30 and minus 3 respectively, but as parameters, expect to need to change them. Now we're going to need three lerp nodes for the color, the roughness, and the normals. The color and the roughness will both use the alpha from the World Align Blend node. However, for our normals, we want to use the pin with explicit normals. Now when we plug all of our attributes into the appropriate pins on the result node, you'll see that our preview sphere is snowy on the top and rocky on the bottom. Now return to your content browser, right-click your material, and select Create Material Instance. Now you can select your landscape, go to its material, and set it to your new material instance. After all of your shaders compile, you'll see your landscape now has your material applied to it, but I imagine it's not how you want it to look, so let's fix that. Open up your material instance in a new window, and scale the window down so you can still see your level editor. Now just activate the checkbox next to any parameters you want to change. Now just adjust the parameter values until your material is appropriate for the level. Once everything's to your liking, you're all set. We can preview the game and you'll see that we have a nice snowy landscape to ride on. And that's all for this episode. If you enjoy the joy of development, don't forget to subscribe ring the bell icon, and smash the like button.